Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. I get an awful lot of suggestions and video ideas from the comments section. And wherever I can, I try and uh, get to those. Now, unfortunately, sometimes I can't. Uh, sometimes when I do a little bit of research or just from the experience I've had uh, doing lots of these things, uh, I know it won't work or it's just not practical. But in this particular case, um, well, what we're doing here, of course, is 90 degree angle versus sweeping angle and which has better flow. In this particular case, uh, it's not so much difficult to do as you're going to see. And it's also not a matter of which one is better. The sweeping uh, elbow will have more flow. Uh, it is a little bit more difficult to put together. Uh, so from a practical sense, of, is it worth the effort? That's uh, what I'm trying to answer here. Is there a significant enough flow change between a 90 degree sharp angle and a gradual angle uh, to make it worth going to the extra trouble of making it? And that's uh, what we're going to test out here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together uh, just patching it. These are just spot welds. I'm not trying to make it uh, airtight or watertight or anything. I just want to make sure that uh, at least 99% of the flow goes where I want it to go. And then I'm going to make two different ones. They're going to have uh, the long pipe, the part that's going to go down to the aquarium, where it's going to get fed by air, it is going to be the same length. And then we're going to have a gradual taper in one case to an output, and in this case, the sharp angle. And anyone who's done any kind of fluid dynamics knows that any kind of elbow, or even in the case of a sweeping elbow, uh, you're going to have restricted flow. And of course, the greater the turn that the uh, flow has to take, the momentum, uh, the greater the reduction or the back pressure you're going to have. So this is going to be as even a test as possible. The feed to each of these is going to come from the exact same uh, airline. It's going to have go through the exact same pipe. And I'm going to have it in the same aquarium. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them fill the same uh, container. And we're going to see a time it, how long it takes for each of these to fill that uh, container. And then I'm just do a, a little bit of rudimentary math and we'll see what kind of percentage increase or no increase or whatever, what kind of comparison we're going to have between these two. And that's, uh, that's the purpose today, just to see if um, the amount of flow difference, I mean, I suspect there will be, uh, but is it enough to make it worth <laughs> doing what I'm doing right here now? Now, I could uh, turn, uh, uh, heat these up and then um, uh, you know, bend them. Uh, but this is really thick acrylic. Uh, I use it for a lot of machining. Uh, well, you've seen me do tons of this stuff. Uh, so it's not very easy to bend. And I end up usually creating some kind of kink in it. I know I could heat it up uh, with sand and stuff, but acrylic's not very good that way. I mean, it's easier with PVC piping and ABS, that sort of stuff. Uh, I am going to try and figure out a better way of turn, uh, bending these. Uh, but for the moment, what I'm going to do is I uh, made a jig for the saw, and I am just dividing up the angle as much as possible without you know making too many of these. So we're going to have a nice gradual turn here. It's... Uh, I think I took, instead of 90, which would be one, 245s, I, the next one down, of course, is you know, uh, 222 and a half. So these are just 11 and a bits. Uh, obviously, when you get start getting down into that, it is a bit of a guesstimate because it's rather difficult to cut something that precise uh, on a table saw. And I certainly wasn't going to go setting up a, a sign block and putting it on my mill to do this. I just wanted to do a quick test. So here I've done, uh, as you can see, it's, this takes very little methylene chloride here to weld this in place. I've done the inside, and I'm going to put a little bit on the outside here. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do for this. Like I said, I wanted this test to be quick and uh, just to see if it is uh, worth doing. Now, if it turns out that uh, this elbow here, which is you know a nice gradual turn, ends up being, like I said, significantly different, I am going to take this and I'm going to put it on uh, a box filter and I'm going to put it in a, an aquarium and I'm going to run it for a little while and uh, see how it turns out, like see what if there's any real difference in actual practical aquarium keeping. 
which is, of course, the important bit. Now, you notice I cut the pipe last because I didn't want to go to the trouble of <laughs> figuring out the math for uh, which one's going to be longer, so I just uh, ballparked it and then uh, cut the angle, and then you can see it's just a little bit longer. So once I weld this on here, I'm going to put them side by side on uh, the table, the saw sled, and I'm going to cut it uh, so that they're exactly the same. I think this is going a little bit uh, more than I need to. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it is good to be as accurate as possible, I suppose. Uh, but again, we're not talking about, is this like 1%, 2%, even 10% better? 10% I don't think is going to be significant enough for this to be uh, worth the effort. Uh, the flow through filters is not necessarily the most important thing. But I, I don't really want to get into all that right now. Uh, but if it gets, you know, if there's enough flow for this to be, uh, like I said, you know, approaching like 20, 25%, uh, then this is actually something of interest. So, like I said, just in a quick ta uh, tack weld here, and I'm going to do it again on the other side, and then we're going to put these in some aquariums. It's going to be kind of interesting. I actually, I've had one commenter specifically who uh, has been very patient uh, and has been asking for sweeping elbows for some time, and this is for you. <laughs> you know who you are. And uh, like I said, this is, um, I think it's going to be interesting. But again, like I said, is it interesting enough that it's going to be worth uh, the extra bit of effort? So there you go. Two elbows. One sharp and one gradual. And like I said, I'm going to trim that little bit on the bottom there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of quarter inch. Uh, I'll machine it on the lathe. Here it is here. Uh, I put a little hook on the end. So they're both going to be fed by this. They're going to both be fed by the same airline from the same pump. Uh... So everything is as similar as possible as I could possibly make it without, you know, getting too anal about this. So here's the tank. Um, we're going to pop one in here just to show you what it looks like. We'll give you a, uh, <laughs> a subjective perspective on this just to start off with. There's the airflow. I mean, there's plenty of air. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you each of the elbows. And guess which one you think is more has more flow before we actually get to the experiment. So here is the 90. Pretty much the same flow you always see out of these. Uh, it flows well. There's nothing different about it really. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sweeping one on here, uh, the gradual angle. And we'll see, do you think this has more of a flow? It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, without it being really, really significantly different, uh, it is difficult to tell just by looking at this whether it is you know more flow or not. So let's get to the real uh, the real test here. So I've got a jug. This is an old peanut butter jar, and I'm gonna fill it up with each of them. I'm gonna time it. Uh, well, actually, you just <laughs> you guys are just gonna watch it happen here, and then we're gonna compare the two of them. Now, because this is kind of difficult to uh, judge which is faster, I am going to, as the last clip or two here, I'm going to put them actually side by side as they fill, and then <laughs> then you'll see for sure. I mean, this is actually a pretty good flow. I mean, it's more than enough flow for a box filter or an underground filter, as you know, because uh, this is what I use, not this particular style of build, but this is what I use for uh, all my aquariums. And here is the sweeping elbow. And you guess probably by about this point in time, it is actually filling up the container faster. It is actually, well, I, mean, I was expecting it to be faster, but it has actually surprised me a little bit in the fact that it is actually significant. It is not slow. I did the math on this. As you can see, now we're going to do side by side. It is actually... 18% faster. This is obviously only one run. I'd have to do multiple runs. But I think this is significant enough. I want to uh, take that elbow on the left there, which is a sweeping elbow, and I'm going to put it onto a box filter. And I'm going to run it in an aquarium. I'm going, to, I'm going to test it out for a little while, see if it actually makes a difference in the real flow for... Uh, like, a, like, will it make any difference in an aquarium? And So there you go. One's done. Waiting for the other. 
Anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and definitely let me know what you think of uh, these two versions of supplying flow for a filter. And definitely leave lots of comments and possible suggestions that you might come up with for future videos. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.